Hello everyone, this is Teacher Yen and welcome back to my channel. Today we will be talking about perhaps one of the most requested topics in my channel which is how do I get a car when I get there? So if you want to know my thoughts, my experiences, and some tips on how to do this, please keep on watching. If you're new to this channel, I am Teacher Yen. I'm a Filipina, currently teaching here in South Carolina as a secondary English school teacher under the J1 program. Yeah. Today, as I said earlier in the intro, we'll be talking about one of, I guess, the most valid concern of those teachers who are planning or who have been hired and are planning to fly in here in the United States, specifically in South Carolina. So let's dive into it. A car. The concern is very valid because we are aware that most likely, like 98% of the time, the county, the district that we will be assigned in do not provide a stable means of public transportation. In short, for you to reach your school, you need some sort of transportation, aka a car. So how do you do this without a credit card, a valid credit history in the United States, an SC or South Carolina license or any license in any state in the country? How do you get a car without any of these? So let's first talk about your options when it comes to purchasing or getting your car. You basically have three options. Lease a car, buy a second hand or used car, or buy a brand new car. So when you lease, basically you are under contract and after the contract, let's say three years, you are supposed to turn over or return the car. And the thing about leasing is it usually just has a certain mileage allowance every year. So once you go over that mileage allowance, you will have to pay. How much? It depends on your contract. It depends on who you lease the car from. The second option, which was buying a used car, is I believe the more popular option among teachers, especially J1 teachers, because number one, it's not as expensive as a brand new car. And if you actually wait and save up, or if you brought more than enough money, you can buy this in cash. So a used car basically is, these are cars that have previous owners. The third option is if you don't want to lease, you don't want a used car, you go for a brand new car, a car that has not been owned by anybody or a car that only has like a few thousand mileage to it. Now, what are the pros and cons? Of course, if it's a brand new car, expect to spend more cash on the down payment and on your monthly. If it's a used car, like what I said earlier, if you've saved up enough money, you can actually buy this through cash. Leasing, the advantage is everything that's wrong with the car except if it's due to any negligence on your part or accidents, will be shouldered by the company that you leased it from. So that's the advantage of leasing compared to buying a used or brand new car. Now, when I say buying, it can either be through cash or financing. So some dealership do in-house financing. So big dealer dealerships will also finance the car for you while others will have other entities do the financing for you. So for example, you bought the car from XYZ dealership and they don't do in-house financing. So they will reach out to banks that are willing to finance the car for you. Therefore, you don't owe the dealership anything, but you owe the bank who financed your car. And that's who your payment monthly will go to. In any country, when we say that we're paying monthly for something or an in installment basis, of course, we have our interest rate. And when we talk about interest rate at the end of the day, yes, you are paying lesser every month. If you sum up the total of what you've paid 
it would most likely be equal to the price of more or less two cars. But then again, that's true wherever you go, whether you're here in the United States, in the Philippines, in India, wherever. When First thing that you need to do, decide. Do you want to go for leasing? Do you want to buy a used car? Or do you really want a brand new car? That's up to you. So that's the first thing. Know your options. Now, let's say you have decided, oh, I want to buy a used car. Because anyway, I'm just going to be here for three, five years. So I really don't need a brand new car. So where? Where do I go to get my car? First option is a private individual. So for example, you know a J1 teacher who's about to go home and you know that she or he has a car so you can try reaching out like hey what's your I know you're going home by the end of the school year what's your plan for your car do you think I can buy it from you or something like that so you can do it with a, with a private individual or you can go to online platforms like Facebook marketplace to look for individuals selling their cars but 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 just be super cautious because not everyone in that platform might be telling you the truth. So be cautious, be extra careful before you pay anything. And remember, once you bought that car, the moment you seal the deal, the moment you start your car and went off and something went wrong, especially if you're buying from a private individual, unless you had a different terms of agreement, if something goes wrong the moment the deal is sealed, that's going to be on you. So everything is going to be shouldered by you. So be cautious, be vigilant, have someone who has more knowledge about cars go with you, I guess, while car shopping. So that's for the first option, private individuals. Next option would be a dealership. So go to dealerships and there are a lot, a lot of dealership around. Trust me. So you, you will not run out of dealerships it's just a matter of patience in terms of going from one dealership to another to buy the best deal or to find the best car for you and the last option about where you can get it from is most of the time your sponsor has a dealership that they've already connected with so for some sponsors during your orientation time on your first few days or your first week here they are gonna allot a time or a day where they will bring you to a dealership have you look around and if you find any car that you like then you can buy that car and leave the dealership with your car so you don't need to explain anymore your situation because your sponsor has already explained to the dealership that you're new to the country, you don't have credit history, you don't have the state's driver's license yet, and all those stuff. So that's the advantage of going for a dealership that is already tied up with your sponsor because they already know your deal. They already know your situation, so you don't need to explain back and forth. When it comes to dealerships, normal dealerships, not all of them might cater you because of the documents that we lack on our first few months here. But there are dealerships that will. Next question, what do I need to get my car? I need my car. I don't want a carpool because it's inconvenient if I want to buy something because my apartment is empty. I can't, I can't move. I can't purchase stuff on my own terms and time. So I need a car. So what do I need? Ideally, what dealerships look for are your SSN or your social security number, your South Carolina driver's license, car insurance, and of course your cash. That includes, so that, that's the ideal requirement. Since we are new here, if you get the car right away within the first 10 days of your stay here, you don't have your social security number yet. Most likely, you don't have a state driver's license yet. And most likely, you don't have a car insurance yet. You only have cash. So now, for your information, your international driver's license, for example, my Philippine driver's license, is still valid here in the United States. I can use it. I, I can legally drive on any street and on any road at any given time using my international or my home country driver's license for the first three months. So from the time I got here up to my third month 
I can use my international driver's license. Now, when it comes to social security number, you need it, so wait for it. Unless you are dealing, unless you are doing the deal with the dealership that your sponsor has linked you with, you will have to wait for your social security number. Technically, it's going to take you, you can already apply for your SSN in your first, after your first 10 days. Once you've been in the United States for 10 days, you can go to the social security office and apply for a social security number. You cannot leave the dealership without a car insurance. They will not let you do that because that's against the law. Now, what happens? Car insurance, if I were you, reach out to teachers that are already in your district. I mean, J1 teachers that are already in your district or any J1 teacher and ask them, what is your car insurance provider? Because most likely that car insurance provider already is oriented or aware of your status. Like you don't have this and have that. Just the same, the same thing with dealership. So reach out to co-teachers or J1 teachers and ask them, hey, what was your car insurance when you first got here when you got your car so you can then call that car insurance tell them that hey i found this car i'm planning to buy it on friday i need a car insurance for it so you just need the vehicle identification number your details that they will be asking for so if that car insurance agent or company is already oriented or aware of the j1 program then you won't have a hard time so ask for referrals because that means that's going to diminish the time that you need to explain your, your status and everything. From what I know, those insurance companies that will, that can cater you given what, given the documents that we have on our first few months here are Progressive, State Farm, and Gainsco. So just take note that since you are starting out your monthly payment for your insurance might be higher than those that have already established credit score credit history and who has been here with the complete ideal documents so just be prepared to pay a little bit higher when i first got my insurance i was with gainsco and i think i was paying a hundred 170 something per month so that's big that really is big when it comes to dealerships again i really suggest to connect to existing j1 teachers so they can refer you to the dealership that they got their first car from so again because that dealership will already be familiar with your status so in a nutshell what do you do if you want to get your car step one decide if you're paying in cash or financing so if you're financing be ready to pay the interest rate and be ready to give your down payment if you're buying in cash be ready with that cash or if you decided to pay in cash and not have enough money yet maybe you can wait for two three more months before you can buy your car i mean save up first carpool with other teachers first before you purchase your car if you want to do away with paying the interest if you can wait wait and save up first save up either for the full amount or for a bigger down payment so step two survey for your options check car facts and car history of a car that you like so for example oh this one's pretty this honda is pretty this ford is pretty don't just settle for pretty Make sure that you go online. There are free websites wherein you just type the VIN or the vehicle information number and it will give you the history of the car. If it has been in any accidents, if the title is a salvage title, I suggest don't go for it because cars with a salvage title will be cheaper. It's because the car has been through an accident. Survey, don't. this is something that you will invest in because this is a necessity. So don't buy impulsively. Know your options, save, survey your options, take your time, ask opinions from those who really know about cars. And yeah, just, just don't be in such a hurry in a way that you will compromise sound judgment. You know what I mean? So yes, you need it. And because you need it, you need to be 
cautious and careful in making your decision about purchasing what car, when, and how. Step number three. Once you've chosen your car, you check the background, it's good, title is good, no accidents, no, nothing wrong with the car, get the VIN and contact your insurance company. So all you need is your VIN, your passport, your license number. Again, reach out to previous J1 teachers or current J1 teachers for suggestions or referrals to car insurance companies that can cater you given your situation or status. Step four, buy your car. Get that car. Financing or in cash, do it. Since you've done everything, you've surveyed, you've checked the background, you got your insurance ready, now it's time to get that car, baby. Step number five, process your license, your state license. Go to the nearest DMV and go get that license so you can freely drive wherever you want to go and enjoy the comfort of your car. So in my next video, I will talk about the process that you need to be able to get your state driver's license, specifically your South Carolina driver's license. So I hope this video will help you. I hope you find this useful. If you do, please like, share, and if you haven't yet, subscribe to my humble channel and spread a word. If you have if you know anybody who's thinking about going here or is about to go here, is already hired, share this video with them and just keep your comments coming. I do everything that I can to get back to you and respond to you as soon as possible. God bless everyone. Be safe and I'll see you soon.